Hello Interweb peeps, I'm also known as Dave. And I'm Jacob. And we may still be a while off Nvidia's new graphics cards, but they've been talking about Volta all year, so we're going to too. Yep, this is everything we know about Nvidia's next gen Volta architecture. So the upcoming Volta architecture is going to form the heart of Nvidia's next generation of graphics cards, replacing the current Pascal GPUs that have made the 10 series the best cards around. As is NVIDIA's want, the new GPU architecture is taking its name from another famous historical scientist. Alessandro Volta gave his name to the Vault after having been a pioneer of electrical energy and its storage. He was also the discoverer of butt gas methane, so that's a fun little science fact for you there. When NVIDIA first introduced the code name back in 2013, CEO Jensen noted that he loved the name Volta. I love that name because it would suggest that Volta is going to be even more energy efficient. You should know, right? Fingers crossed it's not just a suggestion. So Volta was supposed to be the architecture that followed the Maxwell-based 900 series cards, so the GTX 980 and 970, and introduced stacked video memory for the first time. It was though nudged out by those pesky Pascal GPUs, stealing Volta's thunder and delivering their own stacked memory, though only on the professional cards. Yeah, uh, but it is now Volta's time to shine and Nvidia have already launched and started to ship the new graphics silicon in professional form. So that means you can get Volta right now. If you've got a spare $150,000 to spend on the DGX1 workstation with eight of the Tesla V100 GPUs inside. Yeah, so when can we expect to see Volta distilled down to a more manageable form for us gamers? Well, there's a chance we'll see Jensen on stage at the Graphics Technology Conference next year with some new silicon to show off. That would put the launch around May, which is a long time to wait. There is, however, precedent for NVIDIA to launch a brand new high-end graphics architecture at the Games Developers Conference in San Francisco. Which would give it a March release date. So basically, NVIDIA can launch Volta whenever the hell they like, because they know there is zero competition at the high end of the graphics card stack. And before you AMD fans set to your fire to your screens such rage blatant favoritism, we know Team Red are aiming to launch their 12 nanometer Vega cards early in 2018, but they're still going to have to go some to beat even the last gen Pascal cards. So when it comes to the Volta specs, we've only got the pro level GPUs and some educated speculation to rely on. Where the Pascal chips were built using either the 16 nanometer or 14 nanometer process, the Volta generation is going to find itself sporting billions of 12 nanometer transistors. Sound familiar? Yeah, that means we're going to have a process parity between the Vega refresh and Nvidia's next gen GPUs. But it's more of a stopgap production process on the way to the almost mythical 7 nanometer lithography, delivering density, performance, and efficiency improvements while still essentially being the same as TSMC's pre uh, previous 16 nanometer process. The top GPU, the GV100, used in the latest Tesla Pro card, is enormous, around twice the size of the GP102 in the GTX 1080 Ti and it packs in 5,120 CUDA cores. Yeah, that's not even the total number of cores they could theoretically fit in either. Um, according to the white paper, the full GV100, the full fat GV100 GPU can pack in a total of 5,376 of them. How that will trickle down to the consumer versions is unknown, but it seems pretty obvious Nvidia will have to change the way they do things for Volta, as there's no way they could build a Volta-based uh, Titan using the same core count. Yeah, and if they did, it would make it hands down the biggest consumer GPU they've ever made, and probably the most expensive too. The mainstream Volta then could end up housing a GV104 chip with around the same core count as the GTX 1080 Ti at 3584. The uh, Titan-based GV102 GPU would sit around somewhere in the 4096 core level. So the pro-level Tesla V100 is also rocking HBM2 memory. That second-gen high bandwidth memory to you and me. Uh, but the likelihood of that expensive VRAM finding its way into the consumer cars is practically zero. Memory makers SK Hynix have already been on about getting their GDDR6 game in order for a high-end graphics card release by early 2018. And that sounds a lot like Volta to us. Realistically, AMD are likely to stick with HBM2 at least for the 12 nanometer Vega refresh, which is their only high-end Radeons they've got going. So Nvidia the only other client that they could be talking about. So how will Volta perform in our gaming PCs? Who knows? Right now it's impossible to really tell how the gaming Volta cards will perform, except that they're going to be faster than the GTX 1080. Yeah, and from Vega, right? All we've got to go on right now is the performance difference between the two generations of professional level Nvidia cards. Taking the same 8 card workstation from the Volta and Pascal generations, the ones which have been shipped out to the big institutions, the Volta is performing 132% faster than Pascal. 132%? Yeah, but that's just Geekbench tests, specifically using the CUDA API in a Linux environment and not Shadow of War at 4K. 
but it's still kind of interesting. If the GTX 2080 had that sort of performance lift, we'd be looking at Hitman running at 165 FPS at 4K. So the GTX 2080, sure it's the 1180, right? Yeah, this is something else we don't know. What Nvidia are actually gonna call this generation? Numerically, it makes sense to step up from the 10 series to the 11 series. But that makes it just sounds like a mild update and not a fresh, bold new architecture. So from a marketing point of view, it kind of makes sense to be stepping up to a 20 series. Ugh, marketing. Welcome once more to Speculation Corner. Now we're talking pricing. Again, this is up in the air, but given the fact that Nvidia have absolutely no top-end graphics card competition, they really don't have to worry too much about how they price their Volta cards. They can essentially price them however they like. Yeah, Jensen has already spoken about the $3 billion development costs for the big Volta GPU. So I wouldn't be at all surprised if they decided now was a good time to up the price of their new graphics cards. Yep, a GTX 1080 uh, level Volta card could cost you $699, which we'd all hate, but people would definitely still buy. Okay, so that's everything we know, or think we know, about Nvidia's new Volta GPU architecture. Give us the old YouTube love if you like what you've seen and heard, and check back for more hardware and gaming goodness here and on the website. Yeah, thanks for watching.